All right, welcome guys. In case you're new to this channel, this is video number four of the Traveler Shield that we're making from the Breath of Wild video game. In the first video, we made uh, the handle that came out nice. Second video, we made the shield boss out of brass. Uh, third video, we made the um, form of the shield in pine. You can see it's domed there. And all of this is gonna get covered up in this video. We have to put on the back uh, which is going to be bass wood. I chose that because it's light. Uh, it doesn't really show much wood grain, um, but the color's not right, so we gotta stain it. I was trying to find a wood that um, would match the color better, so I didn't have to do any staining. It's just natural wood color, but I couldn't find one. So these are gonna go on the back like that in planks, and uh, there's a bit of a wave to it, so we're gonna cut you know, some roughness around it and probably scuff this up just a little bit so it looks a um, little less finished. These were about uh, five bucks a board at Hobby Lobby and uh, they're quarter inch thick. All the materials and the plans and all that kind of stuff is gonna be in the description. Um, the plans will be up when I'm done with them. Right now I'm still working on them. I do have a uh, what I've completed so far uploaded to Patreon if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, also on the shield on the front, we have to cut the groove. There's a, a, a groove on the front that goes across the whole thing. And you might assume that the face of the shield is just two pieces of wood painted brown or stained dark and then painted. It's actually not. If you read the description in the video game, it says it is made of animal hide and sturdy wood. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut a groove into here and then stretch a piece of leather over the whole thing and force it into the gap. First, before we do that, we'll glue this wood on. We'll do that now. We'll cut it kind of wavy. If you're wondering what this is, uh, I didn't show this. It was just a little bit of filler there of Bondo where the table saw went in a little too deep um, last time. I just figured we'd fill that in because I don't want to dip in the leather. I don't want it looking weird there, just in case it did. All right, let's get going. I'm going to print out this little template I made that will help me cut the waves and the planks uh, accurately. When you're printing your templates, if you go to print, um, right here you go to tile all pages. If not, it's just going to print a portion of the uh, image there. And you know, this is a wide image, it's not going to fit on a page. So we're going to go to tile all pages and then it'll print six pages automatically. Then you just cut them and tape them together for your template. I have the template all taped up, ready to go. We're gonna do the center board. I have it underneath. I have a little bit extra hanging around because this circle here is everything you will see. There's a frame around it and this board needs to extend a bit more to be underneath the frame. So I'm gonna end it about there. And if I crease, if I push down, I can see where the board is. This one fits perfectly. So I can take a blade now and just cut out the shape that I need, and uh, we'll do that for all of them. So this is D. All right, um, and now for this next board, it's gonna go right there. Instead of using the paper template, I'm going to trace off the wood because that's gonna be much more accurate because there's little variances, you know, when you cut, it's not gonna be exactly what the template says. So I'm just gonna put this on like that and we will trace where we need to cut. All right, here's the two planks, and if we put them together, wow, they actually fit really nicely. That's a no sanding anything. So that makes it easy. Um, next up is to sand and kind of 
cut the edge off at an angle so that they look like individual boards and not so um, flat here. Yes, also I know my hands are disgusting. This isn't uh, dirt, this is some sort of industrial glue that is not coming off. This is like a couple days old now, but. Uh, so, I don't know, about 45 degrees. And we'll just chip away at the edge. Not too much. And uh, uneven, you know, in and out. Thicker and thin. We'll see how, yeah, that's good. Let's try this side. It's uh, almost impossible to mess up here. So chiseling's done, I put a texture in the middle of the boards using that scoop chisel there. Um, I rounded over the edges, chunked that out, and then we did a sanding over the whole thing just to make the, the scoops soft. You know, I didn't want all these harsh gouges. Let me go to the other side here against the light and you'll be able to better see what I'm talking about. You see those dips in there? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so next thing we have to do is stain it. And this was a bit of a pain. I spent quite a while going through uh, to different stores, testing out different stains. I found some that worked perfectly, but it was tested on oak. But when you put it on basswood, it's the wrong color. So here are the stains we're gonna use. The darker boards is gonna be Minwax fruit wood, and that looks okay on basswood. And then the lighter color is this milk paint. You can see the color there. It's kind of got this weird yellowy um, color to it. At least that's what it looks like. Here's the powder. A pinch, I think, is all we need. Dump in some water. And uh, we'll do it weak because if it's too thick, or, or I mean not thick enough, then it's not a big deal. Look at that. It's just like mud in there. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, a little weak. Let's try it again. A little bit, bit more. You know, I tried um, both putting this on first and then that, or putting this on and then that, and it made almost no difference in how it looks. You know, you got the same color, so. This is going on more like watercolors than anything else. All right, one down. I'm going to give them all a coat in this. Just wiping on a little bit of stain. That's not bad. That looks right. That's the look that I wanted. You know, very soft grain, not a harsh contrast like you would get with oak. Not much stain at all, just to give it a little bit of brown color. Putting it on and then wiping it off immediately. Okay, the staining is complete, and it took a little while to build this up. If you guys test other woods and know of better stains for this, let me know in the comments, but uh, until then, this is what I recommend. Now, the only thing we have to do is spray this with a matte finish sealer so that it uh, just resists scuffs and dirt getting into it. Uh, way too much satin. Flat. Top coat, quick drying, no drips. No, that's white. What? 
I would almost, I gotta take that cap off. I almost sprayed white paint on it. Wouldn't I just kill myself? All right, there we go, matte finish. Okay, here's the shield. It's finished on the back, stained and sealed. Let me explain how we did it. First, we did one coat of mustard on all the boards, then a very light coat, then a second coat of mustard, then a uh, coat of the fruit wood on all the boards. So that's the three coats now. And then on, and they were all very light, even the fruit wood just barely. Then another stain of the fruit wood on here. Again, very light. This board's a little darker. Then several coats, maybe three or four of the fruit wood on these two planks. I put some stain in between the slits because sometimes you see a, a little bit of wood underneath. So I'm gonna put on a ton of glue because I don't have any real way of clamping. So these planks, again the grain's going this way so the planks are gonna go this way. Makes for a stronger shield. Okay, let's see how that looks, how much glue actually is on the, yeah, that's not enough. See that, none of this had glue on it. I'm gonna put even more. Last one. Put it on, press it in, and see what the coverage looks like. Yeah, that's, look at that, that's really good. Okay, it's been drying for several hours now. It should be good. Uh, came out all right. Um, so now we just have to shave off a bit of this excess around the edge and then we can address the top. I think I mentioned before, the face of the shield or the front of the shield is leather, it's not painted wood. So I have some that I got, and I think it's really close to a perfect match. Right, so this is from Tandy, and um, their leathers have very specific um, names. So you can get this identical color if you wanted. All that will be in the uh, description or plans or whatever I do. But uh, essentially, they don't sell scraps of leather. You buy like huge pieces. So this goes way off camera, but this is half a cow. Um, way more than I need and quite pricey too for this project. But I figured we'd go all out. Um, so let's get rid of this. We're going to cut a groove into here. I'm going to start it with this saw. I'm going to screw this down here just to help guide my saw. Uh, I'm starting off with a handsaw just to get me going in a nice straight line, but it's not wide enough for the leather fold to go in, so I have to go back over it with the router. <laughs>
So now on the edge here, we're gonna round it over so the leather can wrap nicely. We don't want a 90 degree turn. All right, next step is to glue the leather to the face of the shield. We're gonna be using this contact cement. Uh, this cement works, um, you do a coat on here, let it dry a bit, do another coat. It's gotta be a little shiny and a little bit tacky. And you do the same thing, two coats on the leather and let it dry for about 20 minutes. After that, you can apply it and, and push down on it but you're not gonna be able to get it back off. It's really gonna be a chore. So it's a one shot um, kind of thing. So to make sure I have this lined up, I'm gonna use this little pinhole, put the nail through there so I can have it centered. And uh, I'm just gonna take my time with this and being very careful not to get any glue on the front because it's not gonna clean off, you're gonna see it. It's like a really runny honey. All right, we will come back in 15 minutes and see what happens. Boy, this stuff smells. It's interesting, this really doesn't feel, this feels about as sticky as a post-it note. It doesn't even come off on your hands. And this is even less sticky, this leather. But uh, once they come in contact with each other, and you, and you weight it down a little bit, it's they're on permanently. All right, let's take this. Uh, should we leave this on? Let's take this tape off. Okay. Got this nail that's just gonna help me center it. And we should take this off too. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this. Okay, there's a little hole that I'm gonna... All right. Okay. Gonna... Okay. So, I gotta turn this. Alright, here we go. Okay. I'm going to go down the middle here and then weight it on those sides. So I got a little bump here. Let's see if I can just smash it. Oh, look at that. It's working. At least uh, seems like it is. I wonder if it's all just coming over here though, probably. Yeah, see that? You can't work that out. Not easily. All right. Is this exposed enough? It looks like it, on my camera, it looks like it might be too dark. Let me turn out the exposure here. Yeah, that's better. really hard to force the leather into that crack. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Let's, let's see. How are we going to do this? <sighs> Interesting. 
I can't get it in. Hmm. Yeah, I think what we have to do is cut it and fold it in. I can't. This will take too long. So let's cut it. I mean, if I mess up, I got a lot of extra leather, but. All right, now we can ram this in there. And then we'll cut off the extra. <sighs> okay, I figured how to uh, sink this in. What you need to do is cut right here about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little bit less, and then tap it in with a hammer and a screwdriver. And then it just sinks all the way down. All right, I'm ready to apply the second piece of leather. Two coats of glue have been put on, paper to protect it, and I put in little strips of metal just to help um, me not scar up this other side that's already completed. So I wanna make sure this goes in in the middle. And uh, they suggest using things like dowels or anything really. If you don't want it to attach itself. So I'll put these knives here. just to lift it up off the shield as I'm getting this in position. Hope I do this right. I think I'm off a little bit, you can hear it sticking and then I'm pulling it back up. That looks okay, got some overlap there and there, all right. So we'll push this down. Work my way here. This side, this doesn't feel as tacky as the other side. Maybe I didn't put on as much glue. <clears throat> You see, I, I'm able to push it all the way up against the metal without touching the uh, other piece of leather. There we go. All right. This is difficult. So stiff. My son's right here, off camera, watching. Yeah. yeah. Can I come into the video? Can you what? Can I come into the video? Can you come into the video? Yeah, I'll show you. Well, it looks good. Um, needs a little bit of cleanup. Let's see, is this knife? Yeah. Okay, guys, it's working. Nice and clean. I really don't think that's coming out. There's some, you know, scratches and stuff, but that can be um, buffed off and ow, rubbed away. 
edge of that is sharp. All right, so now we just uh, tap in the rest of this. That's how you do it. Here we go. Oh, all right, you want to be on camera? Sure. There he is. There's Callum. You've been in the videos before. I know. Yeah, remember you were holding the bomb in that video? What other videos have you been in? The one that when people saw me and then they were shooting out hearts. Shooting out hearts. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. All right. We're going to get busy working. Tell them see you later, Callum. Oh, I was worried about this. I don't know what I'm doing, you know? Just making this up as I go. All right, let's keep going. All right, that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. What did you think of the process? I think it came out well. But if you have any comments or suggestions on something I could have done differently, let me know in the comments. Um, the next step is to put the frame around it, which is also complicated because you have this angle here. It's got another angle this way. It's not straight up 90 degrees from the bottom. At least the bottom's kind of flat. So I have two ideas for that. Either we could steam a piece of wood and bend two U-shapes to go around there and then you know route the inside out um, and then attach them together or we can cut two circles of plywood one for the top one for the bottom um, kind of join them together and put bondo in between the two i don't like that idea too much but if if i can't think of anything else i might do it but if you have suggestions please let me know because uh, after that, it's just assembly and paint, and that part's easy, and then we're done with this. Um, since it might take a long time for me to figure this out, I'll uh, upload some other videos in between, and then we'll, um, we're definitely not putting this on the shelf. This is going to be finished really soon because it's so close to being done. Um, and that's it. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon next to it, and that uh, way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Uh, also, I did find the package. Here it is, and some of you might have guessed what it is. So let's go ahead and open this. This was, I put it in with a bunch of shipping boxes. So it kind of blended in, I didn't see it. Um, and thank you to all you subscribers out there. So I assume that almost everybody who watches YouTube kind of knows. If you don't know, after 100,000 subscribers, YouTube sends you. Oh, it's a nice clean box. Let's open it up here. YouTube sends you this plaque and a certificate. You've just done something that very too few YouTube creators have accomplished. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. Thank you. All right, the silver play button. And I'll think of somewhere to put this, probably in the office that I finally finished. There it is, guys. Thank you so much for your support. And I'm glad to see you guys are actually doing these projects. It's really neat to see your submissions. And I'll leave you with one. Um, it's nothing we worked on. Jonathan Emmerling sent me this, and I think you Zelda fans will like it. It's his uh, garden art from a tree stump. Anyway. I'll see you guys next time and take care.